Hey guys, today I'm checking out Smash and Grab 2.0 from Get Good Drums. Get Good Drums is known mostly originally as a sample library. It was started by Misha, Matt, and Nali of Periphery, as well as Dez from Good Tiger. And they've expanded into making plugins as well. And this is their compressor, Smash and Grab. It is designed to be really uh, easily accessible to basically anybody, but underneath the hood, you can get pretty deep with it. And I just got it today and I'm actually very, very impressed by it. So I'm gonna just go through how I'm using it and what I like about it, and that will be that. So it's really designed to be a drum compressor more than anything. Um, you basically have two different sides of compression. You have um, an FET called Smash, which is like 1176 style compression, and then you have Grab, which is more VCA, like a SSL channel strip style of compression. And I'm just gonna go through how I'm using this. So let's say I have this kick drum and this kick drum without any compression, it's this. And that is just a raw kick out of the modular. I made that with a make noise DPO. And it's a good starting point, but it is a bit weak. So what I've done with this is I've basically, what I really like, I'm using the FET mode, so smash mode. And if you go into normal, you can see there are two different modes. There's pro and normal. I, I'm a pro obviously, so I'm gonna use pro. Duh. Um, normal mode, so basically you have presets for um, attack and release times as well as some of the frequency stuff that goes on underneath the hood. So for instance, if we took this setting and that's my current kick setting and say so we set it to snare, you're gonna hear a different resonance in the low end. And that's because there's a function called beef, which is a wonderful title. And beef is essentially, um, it is a, a, a low bump EQ right before the compression. So it just gives it a little bit of beef. No, uh, you know, what other word is there, honestly? And then as you can see, there's also air and air is post e or post compression that gives some high end. But when you're looking at uh, normal mode, which is, you know, basic mode, you don't really see the controls for any of that. You do see some saturation and you have very basic choices. You have, you know, soft tape and hard. And, um, and drum types, as you can see, it's snare kick toms to parallel compression. I don't know exactly how they're doing that underneath the hood because that's hidden, but um, certain things like uh, the drum presets, you can kind of hear that is frequency specific as well as kind of preset values for ratio attack and release times. But let's go and uh, let's go into the pro mode because that to me is where the magic of this plugin starts to happen. However, it is actually very, very usable in normal mode. So in pro mode, what I have going on is, you know what, I'm just gonna null all, um, all the settings. And here we are. And here it's bypassed. It's slightly louder, but not a big deal. So the first thing I did, I brought down the threshold just a touch. I'm gonna loop this a little bit quicker. There's an auto gain function that I left on. Um, it's really quite effective. So that sounds pretty good to me there. And this, uh, let's go into pro, this beef setting, this really caught me off guard because it sounds really good. Um, right here, when it's at 12 o'clock, it's zero. If you go to the left, it basically removes low end, you go to the right, whoops, wrong one, it adds it. But it's really effective, <laughs> that sounds beefy. And the saturation function is really great too, because then you can really drive this thing and then not clip. So let's say I'm using a soft clip setting and I can drive the input. So I'm clipping right now, you can see it right there. But as I bring up the saturation, it levels it off, it clips the signal. So we can get a very, very hard hitting kick really quickly with that. I haven't even touched the tacker release times yet, um, or the knee even. With the smash mode, um, attack is really quick no matter how you have it set. It goes from, was it 0.02 milliseconds? That's the quickest and the slowest is 0.8 milliseconds, not even a full millisecond. So it, it's fast, but um, 
it's so fast that I, truthfully on a kick, it doesn't even make a huge difference. And then the release time starts at, it's quick as well. It goes from 30 all the way up to 1500, which is so slow, we'll never use that. But I find with a kick drum at least, you know, 200, 300 usually works pretty well. We're compressing it so hard at this point though, it's never actually coming back. The knee setting's pretty effective too. Um, we have a hard knee, a soft knee, and then a negative knee. There's a big difference in sound right there. There's soft. I like hard and soft. Uh, I could see uh, negative would work really well on certain elements on a kick drum. I don't want the compressor to distort that hard, so I'm gonna stay there. And then as far as the ratio goes, I'm just doing it two by one right now, but you know, let's go to four to one. Let's go to 20 to one. And let's do all buttons in mode, just like an 1176. And that's really squashed. But I, I, truth, I like four to one. I usually like a four to one ratio. And then there also is a mix knob, so you can do parallel compression just within the actual plugin itself. So without any compression, we can mix it back in. I'm gonna stick with it all the way up. But yeah, it, it sounds really easy, or it sounds really good and it's very easy to use. If we go to grab mode, this is definitely gonna sound different. Here it is with the same settings, but we need to change this. Like you can immediately hear that there's a much sharper attack on it. And that's because uh, aside from just the way, the type of compression, the attack and release times are drastically different. The slowest here is, I guess, oh, it's slowest is zero milliseconds, but we had it just set to 10 milliseconds before, and you're gonna hear that click on 10 milliseconds. And the release time, still about 100, but the attack really, really changes. And um, I actually, I like that, because it's nice to have sometimes like, a, say, a 30 millisecond attack, and you can really hear the attack, as opposed to make it really quick goes away. So sometimes it's nice to have that going on there. And the saturation function is really great because it really stops me from clipping the channel. Because if I drive it, now I'm clipping, but the saturation really, it just, you know, it does that clip and I don't, it clips the signal, it sounds good. I'm into it, but um, I do find, in general on kick drums so far, I like smash mode more. Um, that's just my own personal taste. And I like the way it saturates. That's, uh, I like the harmonic distortion of that. So then I decided, you know what, I wanna try it on a drum loop. Um, this is a loop I've been playing around with for a track of mine, and um, it's, a, it's a loop that's got a lot of space in it, which is why I wanted to try Smash and Grab on it. So here it is without any of the compression. And now let's put the compressor on it. Now this is a, uh, this is kind of fun because I, again, I'm in pro mode and I started, I kind of used all of the functions and actually I am using the negative knee in this case. But anyway, what's going on here is I'm in smash mode. Once again, the attack is as long as smash mode will allow me, which is still under a millisecond. My release is quick, it's a hundred. Um, my, the first thing to notice, I'm driving the input and that's giving it some grit, that's giving it some drive. Um, I'm driving it by about eight dB. And then I'm beefing up the bottom end with six dB and I'm doing it at 60 Hertz because this is electronic music, there is, or it's an electronic kick um, or a kick. So there's a lot of low end in there. Um, and I wanna, I like low end, I just do. So I'm beefing it up at 60, which is the lowest I can go. And then I'm adding no air at, um, at seven kilohertz, but it actually sounds pretty good when you do. So I'll just demo that for you real quick. And once again, I mean, we clipped doing that, but um, when I added the air, but the saturation's running as well. Here's without the saturation. 
Clipping the entire time with the saturation. We need to do it harder. There we go. So again, it just works really well. It just glues it all nicely together. It makes it all thicker, wider. It's, uh, it's a really handy tool. So then I wanted to try it also on say, um, like a Reese bass, like an electronic drum bass, like really gnarly kind of bass sound. And um, so I just made it really quickly and I did something on purpose that was gonna be dynamic and have like a lot of volume changes. And um, I just made it in contact and this is what it sounds like. And it's just a Reese, but it's, um, it's going through a bandpass filter and the dual bandpass, or it's a dual bandpass, or a parallel bandpass filter, what they call it. But anyway, I have both the cutoff and then the bandwidth being modulated over the course of um, basically unsynced times. It's half a hertz and 0.64 hertz, so you can kind of see. Here it is, actually. You can see it right there that the two bits are just getting modulated slightly different, and that's accounting for basically the, the warpiness, the volume changes, whatever. Um, that is why I wanted to then bring this guy in because I wanna see what happens if I crush the space sound. And once again, I'm in smash mode and I'm driving the input by 24 dB. That is a egregious amount. No one needs to do that, but it sounds awesome. And I'm beefing it up, there is some air, there's some, a lot of saturation to keep us from clipping and the attack is as quick as possible and the release is basically as quick as possible too. This is what it sounds like with the compression now. Versus. Like you can actually hear on that note right there, it kind of cuts out a bit and that's when the compression is kind of folding over itself. And uh, it just, I love the sound of that. So I'll quickly reverse engineer what happened there. But so let's start here. So let's drive the input. And this should probably clip the whole signal. Oh yeah, that's not happy. So let's bring up the saturation. Um, I think I had it in soft before. Let's try hard just to be different. So you can see now we're, we're actually stopping the signal right there, which is two thirds up the meter. And so now that gives us a lot of playroom as far as what we're gonna do. So the threshold, I mean, we're taking it down by 10 dB right now. We can take it more if we want. I mean, it's just, it's so driven right now that I almost wanna clip it more than I wanna compress it and the clipping is gonna naturally compress it. But let's, uh, so I'm gonna leave the threshold there. And then I'll add some beef. And just to hear the difference, let's do it at 150. Here's 100. Here's 80. Here's 60. And then I added some air, and this is gonna be the high-end boost post-compression. And that just sounds really fat to me. Um, let's just play with the ratio a bit too while we're at it. Actually, all buttons and modes are really fun on this kind of stuff because I just bring up the output. Because then basically the massive amount of compression and saturation is making up for all the little volume gaps with the filter automation. So you just get this really almost warpier sound. So that's a really, really handy way to do that kind of thing. And um, yeah, it worked really well on a bass. I was really pleasantly surprised. And then lastly, I just wanted to try side chain compression with it just to see how it functioned because it has the function. And um, so taking our same bass sound that we had before 
And I just took, I took a kick, I put it on top. It's the same kick we had before, just in a different pattern. And um, what's going on here, I'm just setting, I'm side chaining it just how you normally would in Pro Tools or whatever DAW you use. And so here is my uh, side chain compressor here and I'm using grab mode for this one. And it's coming out of bus 69. That is always the bus I use for side chaining just because it's fun. And um, here's what it sounds like. I will, I'm gonna mute the kick for, at first and then you'll hear the side chain and then I'll bring the kick back in. Without it. With it. Kick. And it sounds really good. It's very musical. Um, if, like just to had fun or just to have fun, I tried like the Benny Benassi thing where, you know, really, really hardcore four by four side chain compression. It works really well. And the way I set up the side chain compressor is my, uh, I'll do it in front of you. But anyway, the attack is set to be 22 milliseconds. I just did it by ear. That's what sounded good to me. The release is 35 because it's basically following the kick drum. I want a really quick release. But the thing that's most important is I'm cutting out the low end of basically the side chain. So the kick, which is now triggering the compression on the bass, the, tr the kick trigger, that is getting high passed at 350 hertz. So that's gonna make the kick a lot quicker as opposed to having all this low end that would trigger the compressor a lot slower. So that is um, how I'm keeping it pretty tight. And then I'm basically tuning the release time just with the actual release itself. But say I turn this low cut all the way down, you're gonna see a very diff big difference in compression style. So that's why I bring the low cut back up. So it works really well. Um, I'm genuinely really impressed with this compressor and it's it's a steal too. It's only $99 for this, which is, you got a lot of bang for your buck with it. So um, I would go, go check it out, demo it or whatever. It's a really cool compressor and uh, yeah, I'm genuinely really impressed. You can find more info on Smash and Grab at getgooddrums.com. I highly recommend you go check it out and grab it and then smash a bunch of things. Do it.